Good afternoon. The Secretary General and the President will make uh, short introductory remarks and then we'll have time for a couple of questions. Secretary General. President uh, Nasuda, uh, Gitanas, uh, welcome to the NATO headquarters. It's really a privilege and honor to meet you here uh, because Lithuania is such a staunch uh, and committed uh, NATO ally and uh, therefore I appreciate this opportunity to also discuss uh, a wide range of issues uh, uh, which are on the NATO uh, agenda with uh, uh, you. Uh, it is 70 years since NATO was founded uh, and 50 years since Lithuania joined the alliance. Over those years, Lithuania has shown time and again uh, it is a committed uh, ally. Your troops have helped to build security in Afghanistan. You host a multinational NATO battle group in Rukla, boosting our defense and deterrence. And you share expertise on energy uh, security through the NATO Center of Excellence in Vilnius. Lithuania also leads by example on defense spending, investing in major equipment and committing to spend 2% of GDP on defense. NATO can rely on Lithuania, and Lithuania can rely on NATO. Allied jets uh, keep your skies safe. Allied ships uh, patrol the Baltic Sea. And NATO's battle groups uh, uh, are in the region, helping to prevent conflict and preserve peace. NATO allies also conduct regular training uh, and exercises in Lithuania. We are now working to increase our levels of readiness so that our reinforcements provide even more effective deterrence. This shows the strength uh, and the unity of our alliance. So, Mr. President, we have just discussed the current security situation, including Russia's uh, responsibility for the demise of the INF Treaty. NATO will respond in a measured and responsible way to the threat posed by Russia's SSC-8 uh, system. Allies remain firmly committed to the preservation of effective international arms control, disarmament and non-proliferation. NATO does not want a new arms race, uh, and we have no intention to deploy new land-based nuclear missiles in Europe. But NATO must and will maintain credible and effective deterrence and defense. That is at the core of our mission. So, President, thank you for your strong personal commitment to NATO. Last month, Lithuania celebrated the anniversary of the Baltic Way. 30 years ago, nearly 2 million people formed a 600-kilometer human chain to Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. They were united in the drive for freedom and independence. Today, uh, their dream is a reality. Lithuania is in NATO, and NATO is in Lithuania. NATO safeguards your independence and your security, as it does for every ally. So once again, welcome. It's a great pleasure to have you here, and I'm pleased you have the floor. Thank you. I am very pleased, Secretary General, to have this early engagement with you and visit these truly impressive new headquarters. Uh, NATO headquarters. I appreciate your leadership in strengthening and adapting NATO when our security and rules-based international order are heavily change, challenged. Russia's attitude and model of behavior unfortunately do not change. Russia's violations of key treaties continue, as well as uh, aggressive activities against our democracies. NATO has always been the, the, the backbone of Lithuania's defense and security. It will be the top priority on my, of my agenda as well. Mr. Secretary General, allow me to thank all the allies who contribute to the security of my country and the Baltic region too, especially through enhanced forward presence, which Lithuania is very happy to host, Baltic air policing and assurance measures. We discussed the preparations for the NATO leaders meeting in London. It will be a great occasion to mark the 70th anniversary of our enduring alliance, united in our commitment to the Washington Treaty, 
and the effective transatlantic bond. I can assure you today that Lithuania will put every effort to guarantee a lasting political commitment to the defense spending. We already spent 2% of GDP of defense, and it is not the end, as I told you today. Uh, our agreement, national agreement between political parties, foresees uh, the gradual increase of defense spending up to 2 and 5% uh, until to 2030. We also discuss the threats and challenges in our region and beyond. We must accelerate our work and fully implement all decisions taken on NATO adoption and development. We have, to, we have to be ready to protect and defend our countries and people. We also have to assist and help our trusted partners and friends like Georgia and Ukraine in the path of Euro-Atlantic reforms and integration. Understanding the security challenges faced by allies in other regions, Lithuania will continue contributing to the alliance missions and operations, strengthening global security and stability. I am looking forward to closely working with you, Secretary General, and all the allies in the run-up to the leaders' meeting in December and beyond. And let me repeat my invitation, personal invitation, to Lithuania because of very serious reason. Uh, you are awarded uh, Order of Vitotas the Great, is the Grand Duke of Lithuania, is waiting for you. And please visit us as soon as possible and as your agenda allows to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we'll start with the Baltic News Agency. Gentleman with the beard over there. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Solis Yakuchonis. I'm a journalist from News Agency Baltic News Service. I have a question for both Mr. President and Secretary General. Uh, uh, Russia and Belarus will conduct Exercise Union Shield later uh, uh, in later this uh, September. Do you have any information uh, whether uh, the uh, Russian and Belarus uh, are planning to rehearse military actions against the Baltic Sea region in this exercise? Uh, also, Mr. President, I would like to ask you what kind of additional measures did you ask to strengthen Baltic states' security? And Mr. Stoltenberg, is NATO planning to provide these measures? Thank you. Well, uh, what I can say is that uh, every nation has the right to exercise their uh, forces. Uh, what we have highlighted many times uh, in NATO is that uh, uh, the exercises should uh, live up to the standards uh, agreed in the OSCE when it comes to transparency, uh, notification and so on. And uh, we know that uh, uh, very often Russia doesn't live up to those uh, requirements, uh, uh, providing the necessary transparency and notifications of their uh, exercises. So uh, uh, exercises, it's part of uh, what every nation uh, does, but it has to be in a way which is uh, uh, in accordance with the uh, uh, agreed guidelines, uh, uh, the agreed agreements we have made in the OSE when it comes to how to notify and inform about uh, exercises. When it comes to security measures for uh, the Baltic countries and for Lithuania, uh, NATO has significantly stepped up uh, and we have done a lot. We have to remember that before 2016 we had no NATO presence, uh, also combat ready presence in uh, the Baltic states. After the Warsaw Summit in 2016, where we agreed to deploy for the first time in our history um, uh, uh, combat-ready troops uh, to the eastern part of the Alliance, uh, we now have four battle groups uh, in the three Baltic countries and in Poland. Uh, the strength of these battle groups is that they are combat-ready, uh, well-equipped, well-trained, uh, but uh, uh, perhaps even more importantly, they are multinational, they are NATO. So they send a very clear signal that uh, to any potential adversary that uh, uh, any aggression against any Baltic state will trigger the uh, response from the whole alliance. So uh, uh, NATO has already done a lot and we are then also, of course, uh, constantly looking into the need for uh, doing uh, more. Okay, we have two words, deterrence and defense, and we had the discussion about that we have already quite high level of deterrence, but we still need 
much more to be done in the area of defense. And uh, we are very happy to host the enhanced foreign presence in Lithuania, but it's not enough. And so I think it's, it's, it's a matter of concern having in mind, especially that there is a concentration of military forces in Kaliningrad. And we see that is, this trend is really a big threat for, for the security of Lithuania. As regards Belarus, uh, yes, we fully understand that this country is not fully independent, especially in the area of defense and in military area. But we must be aware of this, and we have to be prepared for possible, uh, possible actions made by uh, those countries. We mentioned many times uh, during our discussion the word dialogue. Dialogue is not ne ne needed not only with Russia. The dialogue is needed also uh, towards Belarus. And I am the man who wants to have the dialogue with Belarus. No matter that the Bel Belarus is building the nuclear power plant, which is really not fulfilling all the standards and uh, the quality criteria, but um, we still want to have better understanding of each other. So I will continue my efforts to rebuild the dialogue with, the, with our neighbor and to try to solve all these problematic issues. Elta, the lady over there. Hello, Paulina Levitsky, the Lithuanian new agency, Elta. Uh, the question is also both of you, and it will start at the relationship of Belarus and the West is hard to define. And on one hand, uh, Belarus is a non-democratic regime, and the country is also tightly uh, bound with Russia. However, there is a sign of the Lukashenko is not always agree with Russia. So what should be NATO's position on Belarus? And could we speak about the, any clear strategy? Thank you. So Belarus is a neighbor of NATO, and uh, we believe in dialogue. We believe that it will benefit uh, both uh, NATO, uh, NATO allies and Belarus to have a dialogue with uh, 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 Belarus. And that's exactly why we are having dialogue with Belarus. Uh, also, as the president uh, mentioned, um, uh, we need uh, dialogue uh, and cooperation uh, because uh, Belarus is a neighbor. We respect uh, every nation's sovereign right to, do, to decide its own path. So we have neighbors who are working for uh, joining NATO. We sit down with them and, 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 and we work with them. Uh, North Macedonia is now in the process of becoming the, the 30th member of uh, NATO. Uh, uh, and. Uh, in 2017, Montenegro joined, and some, some years ago, Lithuania joined, uh, based on the same idea that every nation has the right to decide it all, its, its own path. That also includes, uh, well, that, 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 that right is also to decide not to aspire for membership in NATO, and we respect that. So, so, so the thing is that Belarus should have the sovereign right, and must have the sovereign right to decide exactly its own path. And, uh, and we will respect that. Uh, we believe that uh, it is important to have dialogue with Belarus on security-related uh, issues, uh, on risk reduction, transparency, and also on issues related to arms control. For instance, we are working with uh, Belarus on issues related to non-proliferation of uh, nuclear weapons uh, and uh, other areas where we see a need to continue with uh, a dialogue with uh, Russia, uh, with uh, Belarus. I would say that we have quite short border with Russia and we have very long border with Belarus. I would like that this border remains the border with Belarus, not the border with Russia. So meaning that we will support all the efforts of Belarus to stay independent state. So this is the reason why I think the dialogue is much better than confrontation. And we will try to collaborate, to cooperate in many issues, Econom economy, cultural issues. We already have a lot of uh, trade relations with Belarus. I would like to continue and develop those relations. We have investment. I would like to see more. And what I like uh, most, uh, exchange of the people. 
moving the people across the border in order to know each other, uh, each other better and to know more about the neighboring country because it's not normal to know, to don't know anything about the neighbor. It's not normal situation and I think this is the reason we, why we uh, have to, to continue our efforts to reestablish good connection with Belarus. But it doesn't mean that the sp special law which uh, precludes or which uh, does not allow to buy the energy electricity for this unsafe nuclear power plant will be changed. It will be in place and we will respect our laws. Very last question, DPA, German News Agency. Ansgar Hase, German News Agency, DPA. Secretary General, you said yesterday that uh, NATO supports the U.S. efforts to achieve uh, peace in Afghanistan. Do you think it could be necessary to reduce troop levels uh, for the RSM Resolute Support Mission to support um, these efforts? Thank you. So we welcome uh, the talks which are going on and we welcome the efforts by the United States uh, to reach an agreement with the Taliban. Uh, I think I will be very careful about speculating when uh, such an agreement will be reached. Uh, but we strongly support the efforts to, uh, to have a political settlement, a political solution. And we have to remember that the reason why NATO is in Afghanistan, uh, our military presence in Afghanistan, is to create the conditions for a political solution. Uh, we are there to prevent Afghanistan from ever again becoming a safe haven for international terrorists. But the only way we think we can achieve that in the uh, long term is to create uh, a political solution. Our military presence is there to create the conditions for a political solution. Taliban has to understand that they will never win on the battlefield, so they have to sit down at the negotiating table. And that's exactly what is happening now. Uh, and hopefully there will be a solution uh, that, uh, uh, that can then bring uh, stability uh, uh, to Afghanistan and also secure uh, that uh, we uh, prevent Afghanistan from ever again becoming a safe haven for international uh, terrorists. Um, we went into Afghanistan together, uh, United States and NATO allies. Uh, roughly half of the troops are uh, non-US troops. Uh, also, troops from Germany, from, uh, from, uh, from other NATO allied countries uh, and partners. Uh, we will make decisions of our future presence together. And when the time is right, we will also leave together. We will not leave too early, uh, uh, but, the, but our aim is not to stay in Afghanistan forever. Our aim is to make sure that Afghanistan uh, never again uh, uh, creates the platform for threats, from planning, for organizing, for for funding uh, terrorist attacks against our uh, uh, countries. Um, we are very closely consulting with, um, uh, or, uh, with the, the Ambassador Khalisad, the, the chief negotiator. Um, I also have discussed this issue several times with uh, Secretary Pompeo, uh, uh, the Secretary uh, Esper, uh, and also President Trump. And, uh, and Khalisad, the chief negotiator, has been several times here at NATO. So we are closely coordinated with the U.S. on these efforts. Uh, and we will uh, make decisions together and we will uh, uh, reduce uh, our presence together when the time is right and given that there is a, a, an agreement. So to answer your question, we will, we will only do things which are in accordance with a, an agreement. And that's exactly why we now have uh, uh, continue to commit our support or continue to support the Afghan uh, security forces, both with training, uh, advice and assistance, and also with funding. And then uh, any uh, reduction will happen as a result of an agreement. Thank you very much. This concludes this press point. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, keep you all here.